Dr. Angela Daglios. Namaste. Thank you so much for being with us today. I know it's you are joy. really busy, really, and I really, really appreciate you helping us here. I've already made your presentation, so everybody knows how much I love you and how knowledge, knowledgeable you are. So I just want to start by saying that you contracted the, the virus back in March, and for me, the the expertise that you're going to share with us is priceless. So I come up with like two questions. One is, what are the five top tips that you could give to a general public um, to kind of boost their immune systems in case they contract the virus? Yeah. And second, what are the top five things that help you to overcome the virus? Okay. Okay, so, it's so good to be with you guys. Here we go. Okay, so, you know, in general, kind of intense times. We've been watching COVID unfold for many, many months now. And, you know, we don't have a crystal ball to figure out how it's going to go. There's many things that affect how a person might um, experience COVID, you know, a lot of different symptoms. But we do know we have enough research at this point to figure out that there's some key things we can do to really try to help ourselves have better outcomes with COVID. So um, one of the number one things, we have a lot of control over some of these areas, but we don't always think about these things. I'm gonna start off, number one, it's in the diet zone. So with diet, we really wanna think about taking down our sugar intake. When we have a lot of sugar, and sugar can also be, it can be straight sugar, but it can be you know, refined carbs like crackers. It can be you know, a lot of processed foods. It really tanks our immune system. So you know, very easy to keep our immune systems working better if we eat less sugar. The second thing is that I know- Sugar. <laughs> no sugar, yeah, oh. try as much as possible to eliminate sugar. And it's hard because when we're scared or stressed, a lot of us are reaching for those cookies, you know, or even chips or things like that. It's a lot of simple carbs and it's not easy on our immune system. The second thing is that um, a lot of people are drinking more. You know, people are really scared and stressed um, or depressed even. And so people are coping with a lot more alcohol. And that causes a lot of oxidative stress in our bodies. And what we've learned with COVID is that our immune system has a big response to this very virulent virus. You know, it's trying to help us, but in that process, we create a lot of oxidative stress and damage. And part of some of the really scary respiratory issues that happen with COVID, and you know, so many of the symptoms happen because of the oxidative stress and inflammation that are created when we're fighting this virus. And so if we can do things to keep our oxidative stress lower that are very much in our control, that can really help us if we're not using up all of the good antioxidants that we have in our body. So, you know- Alcohol. Out. Out. So less sugar, less, less alcohol. alcohol. And then I'm kind of sneaking one in there. It's kind of a two and a half, but, you know, really focusing then on nutrient dense, whole foods, organic foods, um, foods that are rich in antioxidants. It's going to be very, very protective. Okay. Antioxidants. Okay. Cool. Yes. And then the third thing, again, it sounds very basic, but most of us really fail in this department is get enough sleep. Most of us, it's so hard, right? We're so yeah. busy, so busy. And we're, you know, now a lot of us working from home don't have we're working even more maybe because, yeah, yeah. you know, we're checking our phones, we're on emails, you know, we work way late into the night. And so, and then there's, you know, a lot of responsibilities that we all have, but we really can't cheat on sleep because when we don't sleep enough, our immune system is depressed and it's easier to catch any kind of virus, you know, let alone obviously COVID is everywhere right now. And yeah, then we yeah. don't fight things as well when we don't have enough rest. So getting enough rest and sleep is actually really, really critical. Um, another thing that we really have to do and think about, and this is not obvious, is really supporting um, what our emotional state looks like. So I am a really big fan of daily joy practices because when we feel depressed, sad, disconnected, which many of us are because of the isolation of COVID, our immune system also doesn't work as well. There's a whole field of science called psychoneuroimmunology. We very much know that our emotional state is linked to how our immune system is functioning. So we also have to take good care of our emotional state to keep our immune systems strong. And the last thing I would say, just for general protection, is take the supplements that we know are really protective. There are certain supplements we know. I mean, you know, even when 
President Trump got sick, we saw his medical team posting things like zinc and things like vitamin D and melatonin. There are certain nutrients that are very, very protective with COVID. There's kind of a three-prong approach for what I think are both protective and restorative, even if we get the virus. And um, that is really looking at what keeps our immunity high, you know, things that help us work on viruses should we contract a virus. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we know that COVID causes a lot of oxidative stress. So keeping antioxidant status high. And then the third thing is really doing things that are anti-inflammatory and a little bit on the anticoagulant side because COVID causes a lot of inflammation. And for some people, they can get blood clots in the process of, you know, dealing with COVID. So the specific kind of supplements that, you know, are helpful at addressing these different areas, again, back to zinc and quercetin, vitamin D, vitamin C, uh, vitamin E and selenium alpha lipoic mm. acid, NAC, glutathione, melatonin, fish oils, you know, turmeric. There's a lot of wonderful things, but these are very protective things. There's a lot of, um, even though we haven't been dealing with COVID so long relative to other viruses, we do have published studies um, in PubMed now. You can look up, you know, how some of these case studies have gone, um, see how, you know, vitamin C intravenously has helped people even in hospitals in China, like that information is out there now. So we can definitely take things orally. Um, and I'll get into IVs in a second when we talk about, you know, my Your case. And yeah. Yes. Yes, but these yes, are some yes. general things we can all do to that are accessible, that are inexpensive, that we can all do to really protect ourselves, um, to try to minimize really bad outcomes with COVID. Exactly, because that's it. That's what it's all about for yeah. people that have not a very serious, like, immune system compromised situation. Because oh, of course, is. yeah, what we what what we can do? Because yeah, as you say, it's it's everywhere and we are exposed so let's let's build up our, our immune system and so you got the virus yeah. back in probably february yep, I and think so you've, you've come a long way like a whole journey to yeah. actually not only pinpoint it but also recover from it given that your systems your your symptoms were not the most common so can you tell us please what were your symptoms Yeah. And also, what did you do as a naturopath uh, to actually overcome the, the top five that you really think that made a complete difference? Yes, yeah, that I know made a complete difference. And I will yeah. tell you, um, yeah, it was tricky. I did not realize I had COVID for a long time because when I first got COVID, it was before the first lockdown happened here in California. And my symptoms were not the typical, you know, COVID symptoms the way we were talking about them. I didn't have any respiratory symptoms and no cough, no loss of smell or taste, anything like that. Um, I didn't even really have a big temperature fluctuation. I had symptoms that felt like a cold veering into a flu. I had a little bit of muscle soreness. I had fatigue, definitely needed to sleep more for seven to 10 days. It passed. Um, I did not test myself for COVID at the time because I didn't think, you know, anything. I thought it was just cold flu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I recovered and that was fine. And then fast forward, um, I started having peculiar symptoms. Um, a couple months later, um, I started having massive, massive hair shedding. Uh, like a third of my hair fell out. It was very scary. I was like, what is happening? That's so scary. That's like, oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no. And your beautiful hair. The actual medical word, but it was very just puzzling. I was like, what is happening? And I did, you know, have a dermatologist look at my scalp and we confirmed all that later, but it took me a while to piece it together. So I had hair shedding start. Then I had really random like muscle spasms and twitches and muscle pain start happening. Um, and um, definitely shifts in my nervous system. Um, was noticing more frequent urination, just definitely feeling like my nervous system all of a sudden was like ramped up all of a sudden, you know, from having a normal resting heart rate of like 60, 65, I was at over 130 and my blood pressure was up. I know it's crazy. My blood pressure was up and down. I started having arrhythmias. And so this was all like months later. And so I was working with my medical team. We were trying to figure out what was happening. You know, at first we were all thinking, I mean, kind of stressed, but it was bizarre. I had never gone through, you know, never had any of these symptoms before. Um, I had a heart monitor, everything, cardiologist, all this stuff. And so finally a nasal swab was done at the end of August and then I was positive. And so I was like, how can this be? Because I didn't have any acute symptoms of anything that seemed like COVID except for these crazy kind of dysautonomia type of symptoms. 
And the doctor told me it's you know not as common, but people can still test positive for months after um, they've had COVID with a nasal swab. You know, small levels you, of. You virus. didn't get the storm kind of. Um... I didn't have what I would have. I, I don't think I had symptoms associated with cytokine storm. I never got anything respiratory. For me, it was really much more, um, I had nervous system changes. So it was like somebody took my nervous system and put it on high and I just got stuck there for like two and a half months. <laughs> That's scary. That really is. scary, really intense. And um, also that place of just feeling something very different. I mean, you know, we've all had the flu, you know, we've all had colds. I had never experienced anything like this in my life in terms of um, the pulse rate. Yeah, it's just very, very intense. And what's interesting is, you know, I have meditated for years, off and on different lengths of time. I could not settle myself down to even meditate for five minutes because it was so unnerving to have palpitations, palpitations. It was so hard to go to sleep. And so, um, the irony is, you know, knowing in the back of my mind that I really need to go to sleep, you know, as part of the healing, but it was very, very hard to go down. So my number one thing I did for myself to really help with the healing is I got very um, specific about the nutrients I used to change my biochemistry a little bit to help myself sleep. I, I took melatonin, I took GABA, I took theanine, amino acids to really help calm down calm the nervous down. system. Ma uh, magnesium to just really force myself to calm down, help myself regulate more so that I could sleep. So that was one of the most Number important one. things I think I did. Number one for my own recovery. Um, the next thing I did was, um, so the shift with my nervous system was causing me to urinate excessively. And so no matter how much I took electrolytes and things like that. It was just really hard for me to hold stuff. So I had to really calm my nervous system down, but I had to replete with extra electrolytes. And I knew this because I um, was getting blood tests constantly and I would see my sodium was off low. My potassium would be low. My phosphate levels were low. And so with my food, I focused on warm food, warm beverages. Um, because it takes energy for the body to heat that up, you know, and so to try to avoid expending unnecessary energy on digestion, digestion, I chose warm foods. A lot of the yogis and Chinese medicine doctors really talked to us about that a lot. And then I had very easy to digest foods that were very nutrient dense and electrolyte dense. So I had a lot of soups, Oops. a lot of broths, a lot of herbal teas that were not caffeinated. I am an mm -hmm. avid coffee drinker. I love coffee. And for the first time in probably 20 years, I cut my coffee. Completely wow. Weeks. Terrible. Super but, difficult. Yeah, very difficult. But, um, and then just I repleted with extra sodium, potassium, electrolytes. I took taurine, which is an amino acid that also helps with our electrolyte balance. So that was really key for me in terms of stabilizing both my nervous system and then getting the nutrients in and helping my body like assimilate that. And then um, all of the supplements, you know, I was talking about kind of in the kind of preventive thing really got those in. Um, you know, I also took extra CoQ10 because it's a great antioxidant, but also because I was having so many arrhythmia issues. I took massive amounts of CoQ10, like 800 milligrams a day, really high dose in divided doses. Um, and between the potassium and the CoQ10 and magnesium, but it was really initially more the potassium, sodium, CoQ10 that really kind of calmed down and the taurine, the heart stuff that I was having. So that was very, very key in my recovery. Then it was also about once I was stable enough and recovering more deeply, really reducing stress. So not pushing myself. I actually, um, when I started exercising, you know, it would be like 30 minutes of walking, gentle outside, lots of nature, lots of sunshine, but gentle and tuning in really every day. How am I feeling today? What can I handle today? Um, thankfully, I was able to change around my work schedule a little bit, but like really allow myself really time to have more healing happening, more quiet time in my day. Anything that was extra, I let go of. Out. Out. Yeah, out. All the extras were out. And then finally, I also did some really deep um, kind of regenerative healing practices. I did a series of 10 IV vitamin uh, nutrient drips. It was very, very helpful for me. Uh, really bolstered me up. Um, I 10? Worked, 10. How, I did 10. How many days or weeks apart? That was over a three-week period. So I did them very intensively. <laughs> yeah, because I had a really up and down period where I was you know, doing better and then I'd have a dip. And so I needed things to just really help me stabilize. 
And um, I even, you know, I worked with a colleague who's also a dear friend who um, really custom formulated for me. And, you know, we included things like NAD, of course, IV, vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, all the electrolytes, B vitamins. So lots of hydration, but some key nutrients. That helps a lot, right? Instant, when it goes instantly. Intravenous is amazing. I love, love, love IV. Yes. Love and it. And, acupuncture. and acupuncture. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, acupuncture. Yeah, acupuncture. So, and I'm still doing acupuncture weekly. And so those were the things that made an enormous um, shift and uh, like really deeply, I felt like I was coming out the other end. There's a lot of different ways that yeah. this virus attacks and yeah. also it's kind of mutating. And so people that had it back in February last year might not have the same symptoms that the people that might contract it this year, you know, it, it fluctuates. The one thing that doesn't change is our beautiful body, its knowledge and how to strengthen it and, and not suppress it even more because it's very stressful. And as you said, you are, you are tempted with sugar and alcohol and escapism and things that instead of building and not sleeping, no. uh, I am kind of guilty. So instead of focusing on escapism you can focus on rebuilding and and that's why I wanted to do this video because I think that the that kind of information is crucial and it's it's useful for everybody yes. no matter where yeah so and it's applicable everywhere so I know that my audience is mostly Spanish speakers but I'm going to translate it and everything absolutely everything you said applies to them too So it's, it's global and it's so helpful and ah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much thank for your you. time and for your knowledge. You're a walking encyclopedia and I admire you. Namaste. I admire you. My I'm sister. so happy to be here. May we get through this really difficult time healthy yes. and vital.